Okay, this is the respiratory system board model. These are the nares. The nares are the openings into the nasal cavity. From there you have the uvula hanging down off of the soft palate. All of this right here is the pharynx. This is the nasopharynx and this is the oropharynx. They're named according to the cavities that they are near. If we come over and look in this picture, we need to add the trachea to the list of things you need to know. This is the trachea, and where the trachea branches, you have your primary bronchi, and the primary bronchi divide into the secondary bronchi. Those are gonna further divide, and eventually you're going to have the bronchioles. This is a bronchiole, and bronchioles. I lost you. This is the bronchiole. The bronchioles it, um, give air to the alveoli, so each individual circle here is an alveolus. The blood vessels that take um, blood to the alveoli, so for exchange, are blue because they do not have nutrients, but they are the pulmonary arteries because they're taking blood away from the heart. The pulmonary venules are the red blood vessels that are taking blood back to the heart um, to go to the left side of the heart to be pumped to the rest of the body. So in this model, you need to know the opening to the nose here is the nares. This is the nasal cavity, the nasopharynx, the or oropharynx, the trachea, primary bronchi, secondary bronchi. Come down, you see bronchioles, alveoli, pulmonary arterial, and pulmonary venule. This is the torso head. Here you have the nasal cavity, and the upper portion of the nasal cavity, you have the olfactory nerve, so this is the olfactory sensory area. You come here and you find the opening of the um, pharyngeal tympanic tube. The pharyngeal tonsils are just anterior to that in the nasopharynx. The palatine tonsils are here, just posterior to the oral cavity. Next we have parietal pleura, which is on that other model. Continuing on the respiratory system model for the torso, this is the parietal pleura here, the blue lining of the thoracic cavity. This is also the same material here, the parietal pleura, and then you have the visceral pleura that actually touches the individual lung itself. The blood vessels that are taking blood to the lungs are going to be blue because they do not have oxygenated blood, and those are called the pulmonary arterioles while the red blood vessels are the pulmonary venules taking blood back to the left side of the heart. Okay. This is the stomach. It would fit here in the torso model. If you open it up, you see the wrinkles inside of the stomach. Those are called rugae. Here is the liver. The ligament that's located right here, the liver would fit here. The li ligament that is located here is the falciform ligament. And if you look on the underside of the liver, you have the round ligament here. So this is the falciform ligament, the round ligament. Okay, this is for the digestive system on the torso model. These are the teeth, and the gums are called gingiva. They hold the teeth in. The submandibular glands, the submandibular gland is inside the mouth here, and it's also shown underneath the mandible here. Other salivary glands include the ones here underneath the tongue. These are the sublingual glands. And this white tube that is going to connect those two is called the sublingual duct. The third, the third salivary gland is the parotid gland. It's over here on the lateral side of the head next to the ear. And this is the parotid duct that carries the saliva into the mouth. So this is the parotid salivary duct. This is the parotid gland. You need to know the pancreas, which is part of the digestive system. Let me remove parts of this pancreas, or parts of the model, to show the pancreatic duct, which is the white tube here. Show that again. I don't think this is the white pancreatic duct okay. um, that travels through the pancreas, carrying the enzymes to the duodenum. Okay. These are the small intestines here, and if you remove them, you can see all of the parts of the large intestines. Okay, where your small intestines, where the ileum comes into the large intestines, this is the cecum here. And this little green thing hanging off of it, it is called the appendix. This is the ascending colon. This is the transverse colon. This is the descending colon. This crooked shape, S shape here, is the sigmoid colon. And this bottom part here is the rectum. 
you have two angles that are to be named in your large intestines. You have the hepatic flexure here because this comes up here and then has to curve around to go to your transverse colon. So this is the hepatic flexure. This transverse colon has to curve down to go to your descending colon. So this is the splenic flexure. If you imagine that your liver is located here and your spleen is located here. So they're named according to the organs that are on that side. That's all. This is the trachea model. This floppy thing right here is the epiglottis. It's actually going to be pushed back by the tongue to close up the glottis. The glottis is this opening here. This is the glottis here, the opening. And another thing is the brown portion, the brown leather material that covers up the opening or um, partially covers it up. Those are the vocal cords. So you have three structures, the epiglottis, the opening called the glottis, and the brown vocal cords that vibrate whenever you speak. Okay. The cartilages of the trachea are going to be made up of your thyroid cartilage, which is this whole entire piece of cartilage. Then you have the smaller piece of cartilage here called the cricoid cartilage. And if you follow it around, it actually is the same cartilage that's located right here. And then you have your arytenoid cartilage, which is the cartilages that are actually going to move to move the vocal cords. So on this model, you have epiglottis, the opening the glottis, the brown vocal cords that vibrate when you speak, the arytenoid cartilages, the cricoid cartilage here, and the whole larger piece of cartilage, the thyroid cartilage.